Hey, this is Presh Tollwalker. You may have recently seen a viral bottle challenge video. It has over 125 million views on TikTok alone. The challenge is simple. Collect the bottles one by one into the crate. The first person to complete the task wins the game. But the two contestants work by different strategies. At each step, the person on the left is collecting the bottle that is closest to the crate, while the person on the right is collecting the bottle that is farthest from the crate. At first, the person on the left develops a huge advantage. By the time he has collected 12 bottles, the person on the right has only collected 6. The advantage continues. By the time the person on the left has collected 20 bottles, the person on the right has only collected 16. But this is where the challenge takes a turn. The person on the right quickly collects all of the remaining bottles while the person on the left is out of breath and running to collect the last few bottles that are far away. And finally, the person on the right completes the challenge and wins by two bottles, celebrating in a dramatic fashion. The come from behind victory is wildly satisfying and many people commented with things like you should work smarter, not harder, or it's important to work now and play later. But some people have had a more logical approach. They have wondered, are the two distances actually the same between the two people? And is there actually any difference between the two strategies? Or is it the case that the person on the right is simply faster? These are questions we can analyze mathematically. Let's begin with a simple model. Suppose we have a box and six evenly spaced bottles. Suppose the distance between any two objects is a constant distance equal to one unit. Let us first calculate the total distance traveled by someone who is always collecting the closest bottle that's to him one by one. This will be the contestant on the left. So the very closest bottle at the beginning will be the first bottle, and then the contestant runs back. What's the total distance at this point? It will be the one unit to run to the bottle and the one unit back, so the total distance is one plus one. After the first bottle has been collected, the contestant goes to the second bottle and returns. This will be a distance of two plus two. The contestant then goes to the third bottle and returns. This will be three plus three. We then go to the fourth bottle and return, and that's four plus four. Next, of course, is the fifth bottle, and returning back will be five plus five. And the very last and sixth bottle will be a sum of six plus six. So what's the total distance traveled? It will be two times the sum of the integers from one to six. Of course, there's a famous formula to sum the integers going from one to n. We can apply that formula as six times seven over two. This cancels out with the factor of two, and we get this is equal to six times seven, which equals 42 units. Now let's instead look at the other strategy. Suppose someone is always collecting the farthest bottle from the box. What is the total distance traveled in this case? Well, the contestant first goes to the very last bottle and then returns. This will be a distance of six plus six. Then the contestant goes to bottle number five and returns. This will be five plus five. And then we just proceed bottle by bottle, collecting the farthest bottle that has not been collected yet. And what happens when we do all of these distances? We end up with exactly the same sum. So this distance will also be equal to a total of 42 units. And notice, we are taking exactly the same steps as the closest bottle strategy, but we are simply doing the steps in reverse. The two distances are the same. We can generalize this when we have 24 bottles. The final distance will be 24 plus 24, and we can calculate that the total distance traveled by each of the contestants would be 600 units. We can generalize this to n bottles, and we would end up seeing that the total distance traveled is equal to n multiplied by n plus 1. 
the two distances are the same. This analysis suggests that if each contestant is working at the same rate as the other, the choice of strategy doesn't matter. Whether you collect the closest bottle or the farthest bottle, you will complete the task in the same amount of time. But there's nothing like seeing this to be sure. So let's do an analysis where two contestants are collecting six bottles. Imagine that one contestant is always collecting the closest bottle and the other contestant is collecting the farthest. If they work at the same rate, I will illustrate that the two contestants will finish at exactly the same time. So we can see that the choice of strategy actually doesn't matter. Now, some people have also wondered, maybe it's the case that you get tired as the task goes on and it's harder and harder to collect the bottles that are farther away because you're out of breath. So let's consider one more analysis. Imagine we have an analysis where both of them run at exactly the same rate, but after running some distance, say 20 units, they get tired and run at 75% of the speed. Will the two contestants finish at the same time? Yes, in this animation you'll see, even if you take into account being out of breath, both of them would be affected and they would still end up finishing at exactly the same time if you have this assumption. So in conclusion, it is just a very interesting video that they showed one person was collecting bottles faster than the other person, but they did it in an unexpected fashion. The two distances are the same, and the winner is only dependent on who is actually faster at collecting the bottles. Thanks for making us one of the best communities on YouTube. See you next episode of Mind Your Decisions, where we solve the world's problems, one video at a time.